So today's little project, I'm going to be making a, um, essentially it's going to be a little server running OS X out of an old laptop part. So I don't remember if I did a video on it, but I had a black painted MacBook here. I have all the guts right here, most of them. Right here, black. This is a white MacBook, been painted black. It was pretty cool. I used it for a few months until it went there. Got it for free. I used some RAM I'd laying around, everything, I didn't spend any, oh, I bought a new battery. I'm gonna actually probably try to reconnect the battery to it. If I can find everything for the battery. I'm gonna hunt around, I don't have all the parts right here in front of me, but I'm gonna just use this right now. Four gigs of DDR2 I had. I have a cooler. The one interesting thing with these coolers are is they aren't designed to mount to the motherboard, they mount to the case. So what I did is I ripped off these little brass standoffs from the case, I essentially just used pliers or maybe a knife or something. So you can see here, there's one of them that got completely ripped out, got reattached here, it's bolted in hand tight, got a piece of tape to help with airflow here, got the little fan which is plugged in and works fine. In order to turn it on, those two pins you short, I think it's somewhere in here, I forget where the actual pins are. You still have your little power connector right here. This is what the MagSafe power connectors look like without any housings or anything. Um, you have this cable here. This is the SATA drive cable. I have a old 160 gigabyte WD drive, which came from a laptop that was found on the street, I think. It's pretty kind of sketchy, but it works. And it has pilot bad sectors, but I don't really care about that for now. What our little project for today is, I got another system here running OS X server, I'm um, 10.6, I'm gonna work on setting up a little cluster of 10.6 servers, cause you know, in my opinion that's when Mac OS X server went bleh. Um, so let's get this all hooked up, I might even chuck it in a little box, I feel like going hardcore, I'm gonna clone it over using DD over and make this a target disk drive. So the system should be plugged up and ready, we're gonna plug the power cord in, which was then powered on, should fan should start spinning. It's not. Um, I think you might have to turn it on and off again. Let's do that. Come on, fan. There it goes. Okay, so now you have to hold T. That's going to make it into target disk mode. Here it is. It's turning on the monitor. So it is working. And we should see a FireWire symbol on the screen, if I'm right. Keyboard seems to be, there we go. So this means it's in target disk mode. If you're not used to Macs, essentially what it does is it turns the whole computer into an external hard drive accessible by FireWire or a newer model Thunderbolt. So now I have this FireWire cable here. And what I can do is I can plug that Mac Mini in, which is nuzzled up over here, into this guy, and then it'll appear as a external drive. The first thing the system's gonna complain about is it's not readable. And now it's actually the FireWire drive we attached. It's gonna complain, but here we're gonna go. First thing you do, you always set the screen to the right resolution, because I hate using it when it's off. And then we're gonna go to disk utility, and because, yeah, is... I, I still kinda question how, why OS X server has like the full, um, the full, utility system so yeah here we go is this disk 1 s1 is the first partition of the drive it's formatted i think it was xfs on linux so that's basically useless right now i don't care so what we're going to do is we can go with this guy and i think we can do restore and we can set source as this osx server destination boom Actually, we should probably partition it first. We're gonna make a partition. We're gonna call it OSX server again. Apply. This will take a second because it's gonna format the drive as X, um, HFS plus, which is the Mac OS X domain partitioning table. We can go back to restore here. So we can say bunk. It's gonna erase the contents and replace it with this. Now this is a smaller drive, so you're going to have to go back into it and expand it. But then we're going to just hit restore. And it's going to erase the contents. And we're going to have to type in a password, which is very secure. Exactly what you think it is. And it's going to do this. And if you feel like it, we can go to applications. Yes, I know there's faster ways to do this. 
activity monitor, and my guess is it's going to be copying right around 35 to 40 megabytes a second. Let's see if I'm right. No, oh, that's way slower than I thought. Why is it copying so slow? Oh, it's setting stuff up. Because it's limited by the FireWire interface, these drives are capable of around 60 megabyte-ish per second. It still feels awfully slow. I'll get the speeds once it's done copying. Or starts copying. Shouldn't need to set it up, though. This feels like it's just a GUI for DD. I don't know what it's doing. I hope it doesn't complain about bad partitions, otherwise I might have to check DD Rescue on here or do something crazy, which I don't want to do. It's finished copying. It copied a lot slower than I thought. It was only copying at 5 to 10 megabytes per second, but it might have used something like compression or something. So now we're going to unplug the target disk drive from this guy, and we're going to leave this Mac Mini alone. And we're booting off of the freshly cloned drive, and going to give it a minute boot. It's an old mechanical hard drive. Should work completely fine, though. Just give it a sec to boot. Here it goes. It booted fine. It took a while to boot, though, probably just because of that. Uh, the font has been restored. Okay, I don't know. I've never seen that before in Mac OS X ever. Okay, first thing, it was complaining about time. And that's due to, not the cat, but, um, this little battery here. This little battery is what keeps the time sensor and some BIOS settings on your motherboard. This is for almost every motherboard in every system, and all the systems I have around here. So if you've ever seen like a motherboard like this one here, and wondered what these little like battery slots are for, that's what they do. They keep the time. Some motherboards, like my Dell over here, have it so that um, the password is not kept. A lot of them require the battery to keep the password, so you can take out the battery if you want to reset the password. I'm going to have to pop out this battery here, which I think is probably just glued in. It's probably going to either take like a razor blade or a flat edge screwdriver to set it. So I'm going to do that. It's Hello, cat. It's going to complain that's dead. We're going to do a few more things before we do it. First thing you have to do is you have to configure all the networking stuff. Um... So, here, what you want to do, got, I don't know exactly, I think I have both of them configured via DHCP, and I think I set up the DHCP server to force it to a certain IP. You also want to change the host name, which I think is um, under sharing. So I'm going to change this guy to 2. And um, I have screen sharing is controlled by remote management, and I'm pretty sure it's enabled on here. Um, but you have to do that. So they're going to shut it down and shove the battery back into this guy. And the other thing, if I don't completely hate my gut, go to displays and set it to the native res of the monitor. And look how much better that looks. It is Mac OS 10, 10.6. If we look at it, 10.6. The last thing we should do, got, oh, we got 4 gigs of DDR2 in here. We're, we're going to the moon. Disk utility here. You... Spotlight's going to be horrible right now, so faster would be applications, utilities, disk, where is disk utility? Here it is. Why are you always on top? Yeah, here's disk utility right here. It's going to complain this drive's about to die and completely kill itself. I don't know why it makes it useless, the OSX drive. Um. Okay, so here. For whatever reason, if you have a bad drive and disk utility, it's completely useless, which is annoying. So I have to right-click on here and go Properties. No, I can't. That's Windows. I can do Get Info, and it was actually smart enough, and it expanded it to the full size of the disk. A lot of times in using DD and other programs, it'll only be the size of the partition, so it'll be 120 gigs and I have to expand it. Right now, it's fine, though. Um, so first thing, we're going to have to put the battery in. We're going to have to reconfigure it, and then I can set them up as a cluster. And I can work on some OS X 10.6 clustering. You can argue how useful 10.6 is, but uh, this is fun. We're going to make this work. So I've got Mac OS 10 server to here to work. You can see I have both of them here. I want to set them up kind of more of them in a cluster and make them so they can work together and be all happy and fun and stuff like that. I haven't actually done that much experimenting with it. I might do a video a little bit later on once I do some more. This is like bare macro sensor. I haven't touched anything in here. You can. I'm gonna probably allow um, system imaging and that type of stuff. I, I'm gonna try to set that up. Might do a video on it if I get it to work. But then again, this is like six word cold code, so does it really matter? I'm gonna set up a little directory between them. I'm doing this all for fun right now. So yeah. 
that's enough. So thanks for watching this little video on setting up this old system as a Mac OS 10.6 server. And subscribe if you want to see more random videos about electronics and stuff. Thanks.